Hey everybody, Mike here from DIY Aqua Pros. Today we're talking all about the common parasite known as ick. We're going to discuss aspects of its life cycle and how to specifically use that knowledge to get our fish healthy and parasite free. Let's start our discussion. Ichthyophorhythus multifilies is a freshwater eukaryotic parasite that causes white spot disease or more commonly called ick. This is a disease that if left untreated can eventually kill, so we want to make sure to stop it before it spreads to all other fish in our tank. Before we talk specifically on how to solve an ick infestation, let's get familiar with its life cycle which will prove beneficial in understanding how to treat our fish. The ick parasite can enter your tank in various different life stages. It can be present on fish as well as attached to plants, rocks, and other things you commonly add to your aquarium. To help reduce the chances of infecting fish, it's always beneficial to quarantine new fish and even plants before adding them to your main tanks, something that we're all guilty of not doing in every circumstance. Symptoms of ick are most commonly seen in the form of white spots on thin tissues, around fins, near gills, and pretty much all over a fish's body. These spots are actually cysts containing a parasite that is a defense mechanism produced by the fish as a way of walling off the infection. Inside the cyst, the parasite, also called a trophozoite or trophont, will feed and mature, eventually breaking out where it's released to the environment. It will fall onto leaves, rocks, and the substrate where it will further develop into a protective shell called a tomont. Inside of this structure, the parasite is going to multiply rapidly and eventually burst, releasing hundreds if not thousands of infectious tomites, which will then swim around the aquarium looking for a new host, thus the cycle begins again. This entire process is very temperature dependent, especially the tomont stage where new infectious organisms are made and released. Keeping a steady temperature of about 82 degrees Fahrenheit is recommended and will help make this process as fast as possible, something we absolutely want to do when treating fish. Now let's talk about a common scenario that happened to me recently. I'm preparing to set up a new tank in a few weeks, so I go to the aquarium shop and pick out a couple of rainbows as well as some cherry barbs and some neon tetras. I get them into my tank without letting any aquarium store water in, although all it takes is a microscopic drop stuck to a fish to cause problems. We just try and do our best here. A few days later, I start to notice visual signs of the parasite on one of the rainbows as well as one of the tetras. I know I have ick, so I know what needs to be done. I set up a small 10 gallon quarantine tank that will be easier for me to dose when compared to the 55. You can always dose your main tank, but be aware that most all medications will permanently stain silicone and other plastics a blue-green color, and we don't want that, so we take these extra measures. I fill up this tank with lukewarm tap water, dechlorinate it, and add a heater to maintain a temperature close to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. The tank that's holding the sick fish is at about 78 degrees right now, so moving them won't be much of a shock. This quarantine tank also lacks any substrate to make cleaning a little bit easier. Now here we have two main options. You can either remove all of your fish, even those that don't show symptoms, or just select the few that do. Chances are not all of your fish will contract the disease, but as you'll see in this example, more fish get sick over the next few days and I end up moving all of them to speed up the treatment process. Since this quarantine tank is going to hold quite a few fish and the temperature will be pretty high, adding an air stone is pretty much a necessity in my opinion. Not only is it going to help to keep the fish happy, it's also going to create some good water movement as well. No filter is added because it won't be necessary in this example. Just know that you can use a filter in your setup if you wish, just make sure to remove any activated carbon from it because that will remove medications that we want to be effective. So that brings us to the last step being the addition of medication. Most of the stuff out there for treating ick will be a mixture of formalin, which is liquid formaldehyde, and malachite green. Both of these things are going to be efficient at killing the tomite or infectious stage of the parasite's life cycle. One of the reasons why it can be particularly hard for beginners to treat is that you can't kill the parasite that's visible on the fish. We have to encourage the parasite to leave its host, multiply in an intermediate stage, and be released into a vulnerable stage. Now when it comes to picking medication, you have a ton of choices out there, all of them are pretty much going to work just fine. Just make sure to follow the specific instructions on the back of the bottle. Now with your main tank empty, you have a few advantages. All you have to do is crank the temperature up to about 82 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit and wait about four to five days to clear the parasite. The tomants hiding in your tank 
will be most active at this temperature, quickly bursting and releasing the infectious tomites. Without any definitive host around, these guys will die in about 48 hours and your tank will be more or less parasite free. I leave this tank empty and at about 83 degrees Fahrenheit for about a week just to make sure. Meanwhile in the quarantine tank, we're at about day 8 in the process and all the fish are looking parasite free. No noticeable spots are on any fish and things are looking good. I do a 50% water change every 3 days and add back the appropriate amount of medication. When I do water changes, I make sure to siphon out as much debris on the bottom to help prevent ammonia spikes, as well as physical removal of any Tomont stage parasites. Even without a filter and this fish load, I can't detect any ammonia in a 3 day period, despite feeding them small amounts every other day. About a week and a half to 2 weeks at this high temperature, you should be in the clear. Again, this is very much temperature dependent, and it can take several weeks if the temperature is below 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I have lost a few fish in this process and don't be surprised if you do too. Not all fish can take the stress of the treatment, but just know that the ones that survive will end up being some of the longest living fish in your collection. I then remove the fish and place them back into the main tank and over the next week I pay very close attention to them looking for any signs of new disease. Treatment may not be 100% effective, but it has been observed that fish who survive an ick infection tend to be more resilient to the disease in the future, and may not ever get it again. Host immunity wins this battle, and encountering an ick infection may be equivalent to getting an ick vaccine. Now just a few tips to help avoid getting ick in the future. Most commonly we notice this disease appearing on fish that we've most recently got from the aquarium shop that are carrying the disease even without any visual symptoms. Therefore you should try and not buy fish from a tank that has any dead fish in it, or that has any fish that show any disease symptoms. Whenever you get fish from somewhere other than your own tanks, you should always avoid getting the water the new fish came with into your aquarium. This is best done by pouring the fish bag into a net with a bucket underneath and then adding your fish. Whenever you get new fish or plants that were in a tank that had fish, you should be quarantining them for about two weeks to make sure they don't develop any symptoms. This can be really tough to wade out. Trust me, I always go through this but it beats having to treat your entire tank later. If you know you're going to be buying a lot of fish over the next few months, just set up a holding tank nearby with a cycled filter in it and it won't be that big of a deal. Hey, thanks for watching guys. I hope this video helped you in one way or the other. Don't forget to subscribe and check out DIYAquapros.com for more aquarium science, DIY project videos, aquatic life profiles, and product reviews. We'll see you next time.